I think Steph Curry and James Harden are the two most underappreciated superstars in the NBA currently. You can throw in LeBron in there as well because LeBron is always getting hated on, but for the most part, we all know what LeBron is. But have two guys like Steph Curry and Harden, have, have there ever been two guys that have had to face so much, so much criticism even with their success? It seems like they always have something to prove. Curry is a three-time champion. Yet, coming into this season and last season, everybody was questioning, can he carry a team? James Harden is an MVP. Led the Rockets to the playoffs eight straight years. Yet, he doesn't have a championship. Why do we do that? Why do we do that? Two superstars... Two different pathways to superstardom and Steph Curry and James Harden. We'll start with Steph. Son of Dale Curry, a former NBA player who was a sharp shooter in the NBA. Steph Curry, not highly recruited, went to a low-level D1 school in Davidson and not only became MVP, but was the best player on one of the best runs slash dynasties in basketball History. Curry is a three-time champion, yet somehow we still question if he can actually carry a team. And people are still waiting on him to prove something. Some analysts out there don't even have Steph Curry in the MVP conversation because he's not winning that much. Steph's stats this season are 30 points per game, 5.3 5.3 rebounds per game, 6 assists per game. He's shooting 49% from the field and 42.5% from three. Those stats are similar to his MVP season. Slightly below, like really slightly below. But they are very similar to his MVP season. That just goes to show you how great he's playing this year. And if I need to remind everybody, that year he won the MVP Unanimously. The Warriors are 16 and 13 this season. They're the seventh seed in the Western Conference. And Steph Curry has had some spectacular performances this season. One notably off the top of my head was against Orlando Magic. And one that happened yesterday was against Miami, where Golden State came back against Miami. Steph Curry had one of his worst shooting games of the year. And they still found a way to pull it out without Draymond Green. Now James Harden, born in Compton, which is one of the toughest neighborhoods in America. It's a really bad place. It's a really bad place. And Harden came from there. So did Kendrick Lamar. A lot of notable celebrities and figures have come from, have come from Compton. He was the 21st best player in the nation coming out of high school. He went to Arizona State, drafted to OKC, became a six-man Won the sixth man of the year, got traded to Houston, and instantly became a superstar slash all-star. Harden has finished top two in MVP voting for the last five seasons and won it in 2018. And if you ask me, he should have won it in 2019 as well. Because when you look at Giannis and Harden's season, Giannis had a great season, but Harden's was historic. He carried his team way more than Giannis. That's just my opinion. Harden has been a victim of false narratives to this point in his career. One of the most notable ones that he's a bad defender. Harden is not a bad defender. He's actually an elite post defender. He led the NBA in total steals last season, and he was second in deflections two seasons ago, the season that Paul George finished second in defensive player of the year voting. Paul George was the only player who had more deflections than James Harden. Not only is James Harden a great post defender, an elite post defender, but he also has great hands. He plays the passing lanes very well. And when he chooses to really lock in and play on-ball defense, he is really good. His problem is that he's not that quick laterally, so he has trouble against quicker guards, but that's most players in the NBA today anyway. Another false narrative. He's not a willing passer. And he's a shot chucker. 
even though he led the league in assists in 2016. When he got traded to Brooklyn, everybody wondered how was it going to work. Now you got Kevin Durant, Kyrie, and James Harden. You got you got James Harden and Kyrie who are ball dominant. How is that going to work? I don't see it working. If you watch this podcast, I said multiple times that it was going to work. And I said it was going to work because James Harden is a point guard, basically. And James Harden has always been a willing passer. I said that Harden would be the point guard, Kyrie would be the shooting guard, and KD will be whatever he plays. Basically, Harden is the point guard, and Kyrie and KD are the scorers of the team. And I said that because if you watch film in Houston and film on when he played in OKC, he played that role anyway. He scored more in Houston because he had to, but he's always been a, a willing passer, and he's always been kind of a walking triple-double. And now this season, he gets traded to Brooklyn. And not only does he take a backseat and not take that many shots per game, but he becomes the primary facilitator of the Brooklyn Nets and right now is close to averaging 12 assists per game. The Nets are 18-12, and 12 and they're second in the Eastern Conference. His stats in Brooklyn right now are 24 points per game, 8 rebounds, 11.8 assists per game, 1 steal, almost a block, 50% from the field, 40% from the three, and 90% from the free throw line. So he's he's averaging 24, 8, and 12, 50, 40, 90. Looks like a willing passer to me. But for some reason, Harden had this kind of jock label on him. And not to mention, Houston's one of the worst teams in the Western Conference right now, after James Harden left. They're one of the worst teams. And in all fairness, they did lose Christian Wood. So I'm not going to look too deeply into it. But when you look at Harden and Curry, I'll start with Harden first. Seven-time All-NBA, three-time scoring champ, MVP, eight-time All-Star, assist champ, sixth man of the year, Curry, six-time All-NBA, scoring champ, two-time MVP, six-time All-Star, three-time NBA champion, and a steals champion one year. They can accomplish all this, but somehow they still have something to prove. I will say this, Harden, he does. He has to win the championship. And I think he's going to do that this year in Brooklyn right now with KD and Kyrie. He has to win the championship still. But Curry, he's already a three-time champion. He's been a two-time MVP. What else does he really have to prove? That he can carry a team? I think he proved that a long time ago. Because of that, I think James Harden and Steph Curry are the two most underappreciated superstars in the NBA right now. You look at Steph Curry, he's he's hated on a lot for no reason. You look at James Harden, he has a bunch of false narratives attached to his name, and because of the way he left Houston, that's even more of a reason why people are hating on him now. And because he hasn't won a finals, that's throwing fuel to the fire. So there are a lot of things why people hate Harden for, but Harden has been one, one of the most hated players in the NBA for a while. So has Curry. Curry's a little bit different, though, because Curry is more hated so because Golden State was unstoppable for one for, for a time, for a long period of time. Whereas Harden is more hated because of his play style and people don't like watching him play. But nonetheless, both superstars, in my opinion, are some of the most hated and underappreciated stars in the NBA, and both of them have changed the game. Steph Curry with a three-point shot, three-point revolution, he did that. James Harden with the with the step back. What great scorer is not using a step back now? Luca is doing it. And when, when you when you when you watch Luca play, it's like watching James Harden's twin, literally. James Harden revolutionized the game in terms of the step back move because everybody now is using it, especially the one that James Harden kind of popularized and the three-point revolution because of Steph Curry. Both of them deserve their respect. And whether you don't like their game style or you don't like them, their game or whatever, that's fine. But they don't have anything left to prove. At least Curry doesn't. Harden has one more thing, win a championship. But outside of that, he's proved everything. He's proved that he can be a role player. He's proved that he can be an all-star. And he's proved that he can be a superstar. Now let's see if he gets it done this year in Brooklyn.